Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 7 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the events at an ASP.NET server control level. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 4 and 6 of this video series. In part 4 of this video series, we have discussed that events can occur at three levels in an ASP.NET web application. Events can occur at the application level and examples of application level events include session start, session end, etc. and application level events reside in the global.asax file. Events can also occur at the page level and examples of page level events include page load, page pre-render, page unload, etc. And finally, the events can also occur at the control level. Examples of control level events include text changed event of a text box control, click event of a button control, selected index changed event of a drop down list control. And you can find all these standard set of ASP.NET server control within the toolbox under. So if you go to the web form and expand the toolbox, under the standard tab, you can find all these standard set of ASP.NET server controls. You have another tab called validation tab, and here you can find another set of validation controls. And these controls expose validation events. Now, all these controls in ASP.NET expose their own set of events, and these events can be classified into three categories you know, post back events. What are these post back events? These events submit the web page immediately to the server for processing and examples for post back events include the click event of a button control. Now let's understand what we mean by post back event. Now look at this. On this web form, I'm going to the standard tab and dragging and dropping a button control onto this web form. Now when I double click that button control, it's going to generate the event handler and all I am doing here is writing a message to the response stream saying that button clicked. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this. So obviously when we run this project, the request for web form one is going to go back to the web server and then an instance of this web form gets created and sent back to the client. Now when I click this web form, look at what's going to happen. As soon as I click this, the web form is immediately submitted to the web server for processing. So the request goes to the server, the server creates an instance of this web form, processes the page level events, the button click event, and then generates the HTML, sends it back to the client, and destroys that web form. So once that HTML reaches the client, you know, you see this message button clicked. Why? Because in the click event we said, you know, write this message back to the response stream. All right, so that's the post back events, which will immediately submit the web form to the server for processing. Now we have another category of events called cached events. Now what do we mean by cached events? These events are saved in the page's view state to be processed when a post back event occurs. And examples of cached events include text changed event of a text box control and along the same lines selected index changed event of a drop down list control. Let us actually see what we mean by cached events. Now if you remember we first drag dragged and dropped a button control and we understood that button control exposed a post back event. Now let's drag and drop a text box control which again you can find in the standard tab of the toolbox. So I have this text box control. Let's double click that. Now text box has an event called text changed. So anytime you change the text in a text box, text changed event will be fired. Okay, so when I double click that, I, ha I have this event handler automatically generated. Now let's copy this and paste here. And then instead of saying button clicked, I'm going to say text changed. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this web form. Obviously now along with the button control, we should also have text box control. Now when we click the button control, look at this, the click event is fired, the web form is immediately submitted to the server for processing. But whereas, if you look at this, I am typing some text into the text box and then I'm clicking away from the text box. Look at this, did the page get submitted immediately to the server for processing? No. So which means this event now, the text changed event is now cached in the view state of this page. And when I click the button control, what's going to happen? The cached event will then be fired when the post back occurs. So when I click the button, look at, look at what's going to happen. So 
first the text changed event meaning the cached event is fired and then the button click event is fired actually let's change this slightly let's put a break element here so that the output will be a little better all right let's close this browser window let's run the page once again actually let's put that for the text changed event as well all right let's run this now so now if I click the button the, the page will be immediately posted back to the server but whereas when I type some text into the text box look at this the text is changed in the text box but it didn't submit the page immediately to the server for processing but when I post the page back by clicking this button control that's when the cached event is fired okay so until you post the page back to the server for processing the cached events are cached in the view state of this page and then when you actually post the page back that's when the cached event and the post back events get executed together okay so that's the cached events so these events cached events are basically saved in the page view state to be processed when a post back event occurs text changed event of a text box control and selected index changed event of a drop down list control are examples of cached events now you might be wondering okay so now i don't want this text changed event to wait until I click a button as soon as I change the text in the text box I want the page to be submitted to the web server for processing is that possible absolutely it's possible but you will have to convert that cached event of the text box control to a post back event so how do we do that it's very simple to do in ASP.NET all you will have to do is select the control on the web form and this control has got, if you right click that and if you go into the properties window, it has got this auto post back property, which is false by default. Select that to true. And if you look at the help here, auto post back, what is this doing? This will automatically post back to the server after the text is modified. So when we set this property to true, you're telling, okay, anytime the text in this text box changes, submit the page immediately to the server for processing meaning convert that cached event into a post back event let's see if that's what is happening so let's run this page now and let's type some text into that so some text now for the event to be fired the text box has to lose the focus and if it has to lose the focus you can press tab here the moment I press tab look at this the page got submitted back to the server you know for processing immediately so to convert a cached event to a post back event all you will have to do is to change the auto post back property to true the same is applicable for a drop down list as well all right so now we have another set of events called validation events so what are these validation events you know basically we have a set of validation controls within the toolbox you can find them under the validation tab and these controls are used to validate the user input before the form is submitted back to the server for processing we will be talking about validation controls in detail in a later session the idea of this video session is basically to understand the different types of events that these server controls expose and how they interact along with the page level events in a later video session we'll talk about all the events the standard ASP.NET server controls expose and how to use them along along the same lines we'll also see how to use this validation controls okay but for now just you know let's take an example of required field validator control let's rearrange this a little bit let's take the button control and put it after the text box so all I have here is the required field validator a text box and a button control now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click the required field validator control go to its properties and then there is one property called control to validate now these validation controls are used to validate you know the controls on the web form so I want to you know make sure that somebody enters something into this web form before they click the button you know to submit the web form to the server for processing so if I want to ensure something is there in the text box I can make use of this required field validator now you'll have to tell this required field validator which control it has to validate and you do that by using this property called control to validate now which control do I want to validate text box one all I have to do is select that property 
that's it you can change this error message if you want to you know there's another property called error message but we will not change that now all right so I think I have hit F5 by mistake all right so now let's go ahead and run this and then when I click the submit button without entering any text I have I didn't enter anything into the text box I click the button look at this required field validator is fired the page didn't get submitted to the server if it if it got submitted then obviously we would have got that you know button clicked message but we didn't get this which means this web form is now not submitted to the web server for processing okay that's because we have this validation event happening on the client even before the web form is submitted to the server for processing so validation events they happen on the client actually there is a JavaScript you know which is emitted by this control which runs on the client browser and that that basically ensures that there is something the user has typed into this text box before the user can actually submit this form to the server for processing and that's what is validating on the client so validation events happen on the client so these events occur on the client before the page is posted back to the server all validation controls use these type of events so until now we have understood that ASP.NET server controls expose you know three types of events postback events cached events and validation events now in the previous session we have seen events at the web form level and if you remember these are the events at the web form level pre-initialization, init, init, complete and we have spoken about them in a great detail in the previous session and if you remember control events actually happen after the page load event okay what are the examples of control events we have just seen a few of them click event, text changed event okay so those events happen after the page load event and before load complete okay so let's see them actually in action so if you look at this so I I have this web browser the client okay so I have if you look at on the web form at the minute I only have button control text box and a validation control and if you look at the code behind page all I have is the click event of the button control text changed event of the text box control now I'm gonna copy paste these lines and this is pretty simple again I've just written pre-written this just to save some time in typing and if you look at this this is pretty simple code all we are doing is having an event handler for all the page level events and if you remember these are the page level events we have spoken about them in the previous session so in pre init page pre init what we are doing all we are doing is printing this message similarly page initialization printing that message and we have all these page level events and then the control events themselves button click and text, text change so now when I run this web form with all these events in place let's close that control F5 now the web form should load and if you don't type anything into the text box and try to submit the page look at this first of all you know when we requested the web form the web form instance is created all the page level events are processed look at this all the page level events page pre init 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 complete etc but do you find the button click event or the text changed event you don't because why this is the initial get request you didn't submit a page so during the initial get request only the page level events get processed and once the HTML is rendered back to the client now user can type whatever he wants into the text box make any selections in the drop-down list etc and then he click the button to submit the page back to the server for processing but now let's say we don't enter anything into this text box and try to submit this page obviously there is a validation control which is running on the client the validation events happen on the client even before the web form is submitted to the server and this will ensure that you have entered something into the text box before actually submitting it okay so if I type some text into the text box and then when I submit this page okay we have this text you know if you remember we, tu we turned on the auto post back property of the text box to true which converted it into you know post back event let's flip that back to cached event so how do we do that select the text box set the auto post back property to false let's close the web form let's run this once again 
and now let's type some text into the text box and then when I click away it doesn't post the page back immediately because the event is cached now and when I click the button look at what's gonna happen the page gets posted back as usual page pre init 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 complete preload uh, and then look at this text changed and button clicked you don't see the load event there okay let us see if we have the event handler for page load or not it should be there if it's there then it should be executed so we have page preload but we don't have an event handler for load event and that's the reason why we don't see it there so let's have an event for page load and let's call this page load so let's close this run that again enter some text click the button look at this these are all the page level events until page load and after that the cached event is fired and then the post back event and then the rest of the page level events page load complete pre-render and pre-render complete so if you look at this gra diagram that's what you know if you have server control events and page level events together on a web form and if it's submitted to the server for processing how do they interact you know the page level events happen as usual until the load event and then any control level events are processed if you have cached and post back events first the cached events are processed and then the post back events are processed and finally the rest of the page level events get processed and the response is sent back to the server and page unload happens finally On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.